In this video, I would like to showcase another usually non-lethal ultra-tech weapon category – electrolasers. But I would also like to talk about their high-tech precursors – ranged electric stunners. Electrolasers appear at TL9. GURPS Ultratech does not list them as super science weapons, but I remember reading somewhere that they were written using some now outdated assumptions and that they should be super science weapons. But do not take my word on that. Maybe those outdated assumptions got outdated again, and these weapons are now scientifically plausible again. Electrolasers deliver two linked attacks a weak burn and an HT-based affliction with an armor divisor of 2. Since this is a linked attack and not a follow-up attack, the burn does not need to penetrate to deliver the affliction. The affliction that the electrolaser delivers is a physical stun that works like any other normal stun. However, it may also affect electrical machines. Also, it is not specified whether this is tight beam burning damage or not, but I think it's safe to assume that this is tight beam burning. Optionally, electrolasers can be outfitted with a lethal setting that causes a heart attack on a failure by 5 or more. However, there is no cost modifier or anything, so I guess this is a free feature. I can see situations where a character can only get his hands on a civilian model without a lethal setting and use his armory skill to hack it into a lethal electrolaser. In general, this is a non-lethal police weapon, and lethal setting could be used for assassination. Just like for normal lasers, smoke, fog, rain and clouds give extra DR equal to the visibility penalty. So if you are in a fog that gives minus 1 to vision per 5 yards, then a target 15 yards away would get an extra DR 3. Humidity also ruins accuracy. Moist, humid environments give a minus 2 penalty to hit, and rain, drizzle or heavy fog give a minus 6 penalty. In a vacuum or trace atmosphere, affliction does not work, but the burn still does work. Electrolasers are not silent, they produce a zap comparable to a silence pistol, and the beam is visible. It isn't said in the book, but the beam is probably invisible in a vacuum or trace atmosphere. Pyramid 326 says that electrolasers do not work underwater at all. Now let's look at the weapons table. Everything here looks fine to me, but I heard people say that there are some typos and other oddities here. There is an underbarrel electrolaser, which is a nice option. What annoys me is that underbarrel attachments in this book are given weight, but they do not affect the weapon's strength requirement or bulk. If you are not content with the selection and want to make your own electrolasers, then you will have to use a blaster and laser design article, coupled with GURPS blog post that I will link in the description. I have used this system and it works perfectly. What I like the most? is that I can make electrolasers for higher TLs that are less heavy and more effective than the TL9 options. Now let's take a look at GURPS high-tech. There is a short section on ranged electric stunners on pages 89 and 90. Ranged electric stunners appear at late TL7, first sold under the trade name Taser. They simultaneously fire a pair of darts connected to a power source by trailing wires. Minimum range is 1 yard to allow the darts to spread. The projectiles inflict a minimal damage, 1D-3 small piercing, but transmit a high voltage, low amperage electric current as a follow-up affliction. As you can see on the weapons table, there are many differences with the electrolasers. Tasers are used with a gun's pistol skill and their affliction has an armor divisor of 0.5. Range is limited by the wire length, which is merely 5 to 7 yards, and accuracy is non-existent. At TL7, tasers stun, but at TL8 some stunners cause electromuscular disruption instead, paralyzing the victim. You know, people 
talk smack all the time about ultra-tech editing, but high-tech is not flawless either. On the table, Taser M26 is said to be a stunner that stuns, but the description says that it's a stunner that paralyzes. The description is probably correct. There are other mechanical nuances. The affliction lasts while the trigger is depressed, and then for 20 minus health seconds more, and only after that the victim can recover normally. Some models apply current automatically for 5 seconds, without the need to press the trigger, but the trigger can be used to cut off the current prematurely. Also I found something new. If the victim is covered in flammable liquid, then the stunner may start a fire. And did you know that many pepper sprays are flammable? Finally, tasers can be used in melee as stun guns. There are only two models on the table, but there are actually five of them, because three additional models are hidden away in the description. This is something I hate about GURPS high tech. Why would you do that? But anyway, these weapons are quite unique and work like nothing else does. Have you ever had a character with a taser or an electrolaser? I remember making a character with a taser once, but it was never put to use, unfortunately. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.